Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our second covenant Sunday worship in Jesus' name. And I pray that the blessing of the Lord will be upon your life, upon your family, upon everyone connected with you, connected with the church in Jesus' name. Everyone here. Everyone online, I pray that this new year will be a year of great covenant with the Lord and blessings from the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for bringing us to your very presence in this covenant Sunday worship service. And we're asking, Lord, that all the promises you have for us, the plan you have for us, I pray that you fulfill everything to the letter this new year in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, as we pass from the old to the new, with the covenant-keeping God, I pray, Lord, that every good thing is taught for us, your grant unto everyone. Bless everyone without exception. You are the impartial God, I pray. You touch every life with your blessing in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody once again another amen. God bless you. We're coming to Numbers chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 1 all through to verse 5. Numbers chapter 9, reading from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, In verse 2, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. Verse 3, it says in verse 3, in the 14th day of this month at evening, ye shall keep it in the appointed season according to all the rites of it and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it verse 4 in verse 4 it says and Moses speak unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover in verse 5 it says and he kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month and at evening in the wilderness of Sinai according to all that the Lord had commanded. According to all that the Lord had commanded. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses so did the children of Israel. We come to the remembrance and commemoration of the Passover that was instituted for the children of Israel. They had been in Egypt for a long time. They had been in captivity. They were slaves in the land of their captivity. And the Lord wanted to bring them out in fulfillment of the promise he had made unto Abraham. And he sent a Moses unto them. And many miracles are taking place place after the Lord spoke to Pharaoh through Moses let my people go he will not allow them to go because he wanted to keep them as captives as slaves all through their generations eventually the Lord prevailed because on this final day on this final night the Lord instructed Moses and said tell the children of Israel that everyone will take
take a lamb a lamb for every house a lamb for every family they will kill and shed the blood and they'll apply the blood on the lintels of their houses and on the poles and then he said when I see the blood because the angel of death and destruction was to pass through Egypt on that day and when they did what he told them to do in the night the angel of death passed through the whole land and in every house of the Egyptians his son the firstborn was killed but of the children of Israel the Lord passed over them there was no death no devastation no destruction because he had said when I see the blood I will pass over you it was that night that memorable night that unforgettable night they came out of the land of Egypt of the land of their captivity because the Lord had saved them redeemed them and covered them protected them that the angel of death could not touch them it was a covenant the Lord had with them and they marked that every year they were to remember that God brought them out out of captivity and now in Numbers chapter 9 where we have read the Lord wanted them to remember that this is how they were delivered and that's what we're looking at today the keeping up the Passover unto the covenant keeping God unto the covenant keeping God he brought them out he led them through so that they will get to the land of Canaan the land of promise we're told in Numbers chapter 10 verse 33 Numbers 10 verse 33 and they departed from the mount of the Lord it says three days a journey and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in three days journey to search out a resting place for them it wasn't just the Passover it was also the covenant the ark of the covenant that went before them and the pillar of fire and the pillar of clouds to search out a resting place for them that's what he does for us when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ we repent of our sins and we apply the blood of the Lamb the blood of Jesus that makes us to have forgiveness and pardon and redemption and salvation he also leads us he guides us because Jesus said come unto me and rest and we come to him we find rest for our souls and he leads us by the spirit and the scripture he leads us to rest rest in our soul today rest in our families as we go through this wilderness journey and rest eventually eventually in the land of promise in the promised land the present land and the perfect and the perfect land in second Kings chapter 23 we're looking at verse 21 it says and the king commanded all the people saying keep the Passover hundreds of years have passed and the king now told them we must not forget this how we came out our forefathers came out of the land of captivity of the land of slavery and of the land of bondage and he has delivered us now we've come to the land of promise they were settled now and the king said commanded all the people saying keep the Passover unto the Lord your God as it is reaching as it is reaching after we come out of darkness and come out of bondage and we come out of our old life and we're now walking and going through onto the promised land we must remember between now and heaven between now and that place of final eternal rest we do everything as it is written in the book of this covenant once again we're looking at the word of god today on keeping the passover 
unto the covenant keeping God. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the precept and provision in the Passover. In the Passover, the Lord gave some commandments. He gave them precepts. He gave them provision that they will keep in that Passover ceremony. Look at number two. Number two is divine presence and protection through unto the promised land until we get to the promised land until we get to paradise until we get to heaven here are the things that the lord has given assurance for that there will be the presence of the lord and the protection of the lord until we get to the promised land number three is the divine plan and the preservation of his peculiar people the plan he has for you, the plan he has for his church, that it will protect the church, he'll preserve the church until we get to that final place. And I pray that all the plan of the Lord will be fulfilled in our lives. And the promise of the Lord will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Look at number one. Number one is the divine precept. Precept means the commandment, the statute that he has given us and he says this is what we will keep because relationship with the Lord is a serious matter it's not child's play it's not a superficial thing it's not you know like people that glam maybe I do maybe I don't do no he gives us precept he gives us commandment divine precept and provision in the Passover there are three things we're looking at number one one number one is the precept from the Lord of the covenant. He is the Lord of the covenant. We are not the Lord of the covenant. The final say and the final terms of the covenant is not in our hand. It is in his hand. And we have the precept from the Lord of the covenant. Number two, the purging of the leaven of corruption. He wants us to keep, so keep the Passover feast that there will be no corruption. And he says we should take out all leaven from the house. We we'll take all evil or corruption away from our hearts. Number two, there the purging of the leaven of corruption. Number three, the provision for lives under his covering. The provision he makes for us, for our lives, for our person, for all our needs, he makes provision for our normal life, natural life, earthly life, eternal life, heavenly life, as well as a spiritual life. The provision for lives under his covering. Look at number one. Number one is the precept from the Lord of the Covenant. What the precept? We're looking at Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 21. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover and kill the Passover look at verse 22 in verse 22 it says and you shall take a bunch of iso and deep deep it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Look at verse 23. Verse 23 says, For the Lord will pass through uh, to smite the Egyptians and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and uh, of the two sides of the post. The Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, will not allow, will not permit the destroyer to come in 
unto your houses to smite you. And we need to understand the principle behind this. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Whether you are an Egyptian or an Israelite, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in the word of God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yet have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked shall repent and live so. Normally, all the Egyptians and all the Israelites were worthy of death, and none can say, none could say, I have never seen, I don't merit the death penalty yet. The Lord, and the Lord provided a substitute, and the substitute was in the lamb, that they will take a lamb and kill the lamb, and they will shed the blood. Now, nobody will know that the blood had been shed if they don't see the sign of the blood on the top of their houses, on the lintels of their houses. That reason why? To show that a substitute had been killed and to show that a lamb had been sacrificed. That's the reason why they were told to put the blood on the lintels of their houses so that anybody passing by will know that a substitute had died. A substitute had been sacrificed for them and the angels passing by will see the blood Death has taken place already in that house. So they will pass over and, they will, and the angel will not destroy or kill any of the people in the houses. But the Israelite that has slain the lamb and applied the blood, they must stay in the houses where, those, where the blood had been applied. Why? Because the blood was not on their forehead. If they went out, the angel of death will not see the blood on them. Therefore, they are to stay inside so that when the angel will see the blood on the lintels of their houses, they will be spared. The same thing with us today. Jesus Christ, behold the Lamb of God that taken the sin of the world away. He had been slain. His blood has been shed. And it is when we stay under the cover of the blood of the Lamb. And we're not like those outsiders, Egyptians, that do not have any faith in the blood of the Lamb. We stay under the cover of the blood. He says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Look at verse 50 there. In verse 50, it tells us, thus did all the children of Israel. Right. Nobody argued, nobody proved that you know, you know, and nobody said, but my good works, uh -uh, your good works cannot save you. We do not have enough good works that will shield us from the judgment of God. Only the blood, the blood of the Lamb. And so those children of Israel, they understood uh, the soul that seen it will die. I have sinned, we have sinned, our families have sinned, and the only way we could have the redemption, the salvation, the covering of the Lord is that we shed the blood and apply the blood. And so those children of Israel, by faith, they did that. And it says, thus did all the children of Israel. And the same thing with us, you are coming to the church, wonderful. But you must still personally apply the blood of the Lamb. Because if you don't have the blood of the Lamb, whatever you say you are doing, whatever you say it makes you worthy, is not enough. It's the blood of the Lamb. You repent of your sin. You turn away from all the Egyptian lifestyle. You believe that Jesus Christ was slain for you. And you abide under the covering of the blood of the Lamb. You do like the children of Israel did, did thus did all the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it was that 
that spared them. And what the Lord has commanded, that's exactly what we ought to do. Matthew chapter 28, we're looking at verse 20. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, it says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe. What are we teaching the people that we go to? Repent ye and believe the gospel. We tell them this is the blood that was shed for us and that everyone should turn away from their sins because Jesus said except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish. But after we have repented repentance is not enough we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we are saved. We believe that he died for us. We believe that he is our substitute. We believe that a sacrifice Sacrifice is enough, sufficient to take away all our sins, whatsoever I've commanded you. And then it says, and lo, I am with you. Because you have faith in the blood of the Lamb, I am with you. And when the angel of death is passing over, he sees that we have repented. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is with us. And when he sees him who shed his blood for us, with us, it will pass over us. And it says, even to the end of the world. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. In Acts chapter 10, verse 33. Acts chapter 10, verse 33. Immediately, therefore, Cornelius said, I, Cornelius, said to thee, Peter, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of, of God. And so Cornelius said, we are Gentiles, we brought all these people together, they are my people, they are my relatives, they are my friends, they are my colleagues, and we are here for one thing, to hear all things whatsoever you are being commanded. And what was Peter going to tell them? What the Lord had commanded. That this is the Lamb. The Lamb of God. That takes away all our sin. What will Peter tell him? He'll tell him. In ourselves we cannot save ourselves. Our good works cannot save us. Seeing vision and seeing an angel cannot save us. We must come under the cover and the covering and the conversion through the blood of Jesus Christ. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever believeth in him will not perish and that's what we are to say today I want to hear whatever the Lord has commanded I want to hear whatever the Lord has said that you should tell me we should have that attitude and what he wants us to tell you is that all have seen come short of the glory of God what he wants us to say is that except we repent we perish what he wants us to say is that it's only through Christ and the blood of the lamb that we can be redeemed and saved and it's only the power of the blood that will cleanse our sin cover our sins from the presence of the Lord and in the angel of Dead will not pass over, it will not come over us. We pass from death unto life because we believe that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and He died to save us. The precept from the Lord of the covenant. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the purging of the leaven of corruption. We're told in Numbers chapter 9, reading from verse 11. In Numbers chapter 9, verse 11, the 14th day of the second month at evening, they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. Leaven symbolizes evil. 
Leaven symbolizes sin. Leaven symbolizes corruption. And as we come to the Lord, we don't come with our evil, with our sin, with our transgression. We don't pocket our transgression. Hide our transgression. We do not allow transgression, corruption to remain. He has commanded, we'll purge out all the leaven of corruption, of sin, of transgression. If we claim to be saved, there'll be no corruption, there'll be no sin, there'll be no evil, because at the point we observe the Passover, all leaven is gone. Look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're reading here from verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, your glory is not good. Paul the Apostle by the Spirit was talking to the Corinthians. These Corinthians were saying, we belong to God, we're people of God, we're children of God. And yet, and yet, they kept evil, they kept sin, they kept corruption in their midst. And so Paul the Apostle said, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole land? And if we glory, if there is sin in our lives, if there is evil in our lives, if there is corruption in our lives of any nature, and then we say, I'm a child of God, I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, your boasting is not good. If you say, yes, I know I have corruption. Yes, I know I have evil in me. And, and, and you do it without, uh, without even blinking an eye. And you still say, I'm a child of God. I belong to, I belong to. It says, your boasting is not good. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven lifted the whole lump. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, porch out therefore the old leaven new testament and he's talking to believers in christ he's talking to these corinthians who claim they belong to the lord he said purge out therefore the old leaven in our lives the old leaven will purge out now we come to a new year and everything should be new new thoughts and new hearts and new and new spirit and new attitude and new lifestyle we say that we're now new creatures in christ if any man be in christ it's a new creature old things are passed away if we still have the old sinfulness and the old depravity and the old grudges and the old hatred and the old character. Now we don't do, we do not do, do the truth. I come to covenant with the Lord and I come with my old habit and my old life and nothing is changing. It says our boasting, our glory is not good. A little leaven coming from the old year and coming into the new year will leaven the whole lump. It says purge out. Therefore the old leaven that she may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even Christ. Look at this our Passover is sacrificed for us. Those uh, Old Testament people, the Israelites, they, they escaped the judgment because of a lamb that was slain for them. And they said that was their, that was their passing over symbol. But now Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Because of that, look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, all that shall pass. Because now 
we have repented we have come out of darkness we have come to the light we have come out of the world we have come to the Lord we have come out of the griefs and the power of Satan and we have come to our Savior our Lord he says therefore we purge out the old leaven neither was the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity, of honesty, of loyalty, of faithfulness, and truth. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, But now I have written unto you. They have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, a sister, a believer, be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one not to eat. We're looking at number three here. Number three, the provision for lives under his covering. The provision he makes as he says we apply the blood and we stay in those houses where the blood of the Passover had been applied so that the angel of death will pass away from us and the destroyer will not touch us. Now he makes provision for our lives. This new year he has made provision for your life. When you go out, provision. When you come in, provision. When you go to the office, and you're going to the office, you're going to the market everywhere, in the marketplace, you go like a redeemed man, a redeemed woman, a person that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are not going around as an Egyptian. Give me a good amen. You're not going around as a sinner, as a backslider, but you're going around like people that have experienced the salvation of the Lord and the redemption of the Lord. And then uh, if you do like that, if you live like that, it's made provision for your life under his covering. In Exodus chapter 12, uh, reading from verse 28, and the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded. And Moses and Aaron, as commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. What a wonderful thing if, uh, you know, as you hear the word of God this year, whether it's Monday or Thursday or, or it's uh, Saturday or Sunday or Tuesday, you do exactly as the Lord had said. It's not that, you know, we're here. We understand, we even write notes, but we do nothing as to what the Lord has commanded. If the children of Israel did like that, and they heard the word from Moses, and they heard how they should believe the word of the Lord and apply the blood on the lintels of their houses, if they only heard, understood, and even spoke about it in evangelism to others and even wrote notes but they never did what he said they would have died they would have perished and if they perished like that they perished under the light of knowledge that he had given them they will perish forever but because they did because they obeyed, before, because they acted out everything he taught them, that's how they were saved, that's how they were redeemed. That's why the angel of death could not touch them. Now, if we only come, we're here about repentance, we don't repent. We hear about faith in Christ. We don't have faith in Christ. We hear about salvation. This is the day of salvation. And we don't apply that. We don't get saved. And this is the life of a new creature in Christ. And we still live like the old creature. The blessing of the Passover will not be upon our lives. It is in the doing. 
It is in obedience to the word. That's how we get saved. That's how we get sanctified. And that's how the protection of the Lord abides on us. Look at uh, that verse 28 again. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Look at Bastachi in Bastachi and Pharaoh rose up in the night he and all his servants and all the Egyptians and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house whence there was not one dead. They died because they didn't apply, they didn't have the blood of the Lamb. And all people today, whether they're in church or outside the church, if they don't have the blood of the Lamb of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross of Calvary, they might go to church, they might give tithes and offering, they might dress like we dress, they might, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and they might be everything, yet they have not repented and they do not apply the blood of the Lamb at a particular day, at a particular time. If they die in that condition, they will not be with God forever. Only the people that have obeyed and they have repented, and you can tell the day, and you can tell the time, and you can tell how it it really happened to you. only those who have that definite experience of repentance and faith resulting in salvation. Only those are the people that belong to the Lord and they are both in their houses. Look at Psalm 91. I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth. Not a religious man who is roaming about from church to church. They come to this church, they go to that church, they go everywhere and they're just collecting information. They're gathering knowledge. But they do not come to Christ and they do not abide in Christ. Only the people who have repented, only the people who have come under the cover of the blood of the Lamb, they're the only people that have this provision under his covering. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, I will say of the Lord he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Not in myself. In him will I trust. Maybe you are trying to keep the commandments all by yourself. There's no faith there. Only struggle. Only trying to copy how the Christians live. And you are trying to be like the Christians. Ah, that doesn't make it. It's the people that trust him. That believe in him. He plans salvation. And the plan of salvation is only in Jesus do we find that salvation. Not in self. Only in the Savior. And then we trust him. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. I thought there will be a good amen there. And from the noisome pestilence. Well, what's the snare of the fowler? Well, whatever you hear is going on outside, on the streets, on the roads, in the night, 
in the jungle and then it says from pestilence what's pestilence all those diseases upon egyptians upon the canaanites upon the world so this year as you put your faith totally in christ all those pestilences and diseases they are wiped away in jesus name and then it says in verse 4 in verse 4 it tells us it says he shall cover thee with his feathers he will cover you and under his wings shall thou trust that is truth Shall, shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Amen. Only truth will keep us covered from all those things going on in the world. Error cannot keep us. False doctrine cannot keep us. Self-deception cannot keep us. Opinions cannot keep us. Only the truth of Scripture. Because that truth comes out from the mind, from the mouth of God. And whatever comes out of the mouth of God, His promises, His precepts, His prophecies, everything He has told us, and we confide in that. And we believe in that, He will cover us. He will cover you. And his truth will be your shield. And as the arrows of the enemy may come at you, the truth will prevent that arrow from getting to you. The arrow of the world will not get to me. The arrow of the world will not get to me. Will not pierce me. This year, as we go about everywhere, they throw arrows here and there. The Lord will shield you. The Lord will protect you. And no sickness, no evil, no power of darkness will bring you down in Jesus' name. But you abide, you remain under His cover. You don't go out to the people of the world, to the devil worshippers, to go and eat of their sacrifices for them. You don't go into their night clubs to go and have the works of the flesh. You abide where Christ abides. And you do only what Christ will do. And you go to places only where Christ will go. Your life is secured in Jesus' name. And he's going to give you something. Look at the final verse of that night, uh, Psalm 91. I'm looking at verse 16 here. And he says in verse 16, that's Psalm 91, verse 16, with what kind of life? I said, well, what kind of life? If Jesus tarries and this year runs to December, you will still be alive. And if this December, if Jesus has not come and we're going to the next year, next year, I will still be here too. And I will tell you, Happy New Year again. In our lives, He'll keep us healthy. He'll keep us holy. He'll keep us protected in Jesus' name. With long life will I satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. He will do that for us in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, we're looking at divine presence and protection through to the promised land. Until we get there, he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll be with us to the very end in Jesus' name. Look at Numbers chapter 9. We're reading from verse 15. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of 
the testimonies and at evening there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning what the lord did for them is that during the day he gave a cloud of pillar the sun was shining they were in the desert in the wilderness and he gave them cover he gave them protection so that the heat of the sun will not hurt them and the heat in the world will not hurt you and then he gave them a pillar of fire by night so that all the animals and the dangerous animals and insects and reptiles, the pillar of fire burnt them up. The Lord is going to do the same thing for you this year because his divine presence and protection will be with you, will be with us until we reach the promised land until i reach my home until you reach your home nothing will disturb or hinder or stop your journey in jesus name three things we're looking at number one we're looking at the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire number two the presence of christ and the purging by fire number three the purity of Christians and their protection by fire. Look at number one. Number one is the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. In Exodus chapter 13, reading from verse 21. Exodus 13 verse 21, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light and to go by day and night during the day pillar of cloud and during the night pillar of fire look at verse 22 in verse 22 and he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people he took that not away all through their days all through their time until they reached the promised land he never took away the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire in numbers chapter 14 verse 14 numbers 14 verse 14 and they will tell each to the inhabitants of the land. Uh, Moses here was praying, For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among these people, and that thou, Lord, art, see, uh, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them the cloud standeth over them to shield them to come between them and the heat of the sun and that thou goest before them by day and then it says by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night i pray that that cloudy pillar guiding them to the place they ought to go will never leave you and the pillar of fire will never forsake you or your family in jesus name in deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 15 deuteronomy chapter 31 looking there at verse 15 and the lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle we're looking at nehemiah chapter 9 in nehemiah chapter 9 reading from verse 19 it tells us yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest 
them not in the wilderness the pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the day neither the pillar of fire by night to show them the light and the way wherein they should go. It was the pillar that led. And so did each miss their way. The pillar, because God orchestrated that, and because God gave them that in the wilderness where there was no road map, and where there was no signboard, and yet the direction they ought to go, the pillar of cloud went that direction. Because of the leading of the Lord, that's why they didn't go astray. That's why, by the pillar of cloud and by the pillar of fire, that's why he led them. He will lead us. In this world, we don't know tomorrow. We don't know what we should do, where we should go, who should, we should befriend, who we should have as acquaintances and contact. And yet some people in the world, they could lead us astray, but because the presence of the Lord will be with us, you will not be led astray in Jesus' name. Every step you take, Every decision you make, every direction you go, he leaves because of the presence of Christ in our lives. And he has the protection of fire upon us. You will not go astray. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, he tells us, Thou givest them also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withholdest not thy manner from their mouth, and givest them water for their thirst. In verse 21, in verse 21, yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lack nothing. Forty years, they lack nothing. Can I announce to you that this year, you will lack nothing. Yeah. Everything for yourself. Everything for your husband, for your wife. Everything for children, your family. Everything for your work and for your business. Everything for your, for your spiritual life. You will lack nothing. Yeah. If you believe that, it will happen. Now, you said they lack nothing. Their clothes wax not old, and their feet swelled not. Every swelling taken away. Your body, your feet, your neck, your head, all those unwarranted swellings go in Jesus' name. We're looking, at, we're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the presence of Christ and the purging by fire. In the Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, it says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am, not I was, I am, not I will be, I am with you. How often? I said how often? Your house will be with you. On the street, it will be with you. When you are with friends, it will be with you. When you are with unannounced foes, unannounced enemies, whose faces smile, but their hearts are frowning, it will be with you. He will always be with you and between you and those people that will hurt your life in Jesus' name. He says, I am with you always, even until the death of the last apostle. I did hear your answer. Ah, uh, you miss something there. There are people that say the power of Christ only is with us until the end of the last apostle. When the apostles died, no more miracles, no more, no more healing, and no more deliverance because the apostles have taken the power away of them. Ah, those theologians mislead you. Their books mislead you. He didn't say that. He said, I am with you always. Even 
even whether the pastor is there or not, he'll be with you. Whether the apostles are there or not, he'll be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Whether those teachers and apostles are there or not, when they finish their work, they go. But Jesus remains alive. He'll never leave you. He'll never leave me. Amen. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If sickness knocks at the door, the healer is there with you. If oppression, affliction, if they knock at your door, your deliverer is right there. If poverty knocks at the door, your prosperity and your provider is always there. This year, you see the provision of the Lord by the presence of Christ abiding with you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. You know, there are times human beings, God has made them our neighbors, our friends, our brothers and sisters to help us. And he sends them, and they don't understand the reason he gives them all the gifts and the gold and the money and the resources. It's not just for them to spend on themselves, it's to be our helper. But sometimes they are forgetful. And sometimes the help that the Lord is saying, go give him, go give her. They forget. Even when they forget, we will still say, I can't see that man, I can't see that woman, and they're not bringing the help. The Lord will be your helper. If A doesn't bring the help, and B is delaying, it has a thousand other people, he will talk to them, they will bring the help. Because the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Why? Because the Lord will protect you. He'll protect you from Pharaoh. He'll protect you from Nebuchadnezzar. He'll protect you from Herod. He'll protect you from them all. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Give me another good amen there. Malachi chapter 3, we're reading from verse 2. Malachi chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like the refiner's fire and like the fuller's soul. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, he shall siege as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them, purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. His fire will purge every chaff away from our lives. 
all those things that are trying to hinder or disturb us from offering a righteous offering to the Lord Christ by his presence and Christ by his fire he will purge everything away in Jesus name Matthew chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 11 Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with and with and with you see some people say they're baptized with the Holy Ghost but no fire no flame no passion no zeal it shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire this year baptism in the Holy Ghost this year baptism with fire Look at verse 12. In verse 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Maybe there's chaff in our lives. Maybe there's chaff, not poisonous. But not edible, not nutritious. Maybe there is child. It is not evil, but it's useless. Every useless, worthless thing, the fire of the Lord will burn out of your life. This year, everything that makes us useless, unprofitable, in attitude, in action, the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn everything away. Look at number three. Number three is the purity of Christians and their protection by fire. Their protection by fire. Acts chapter 15, we're looking at verse 9. Acts chapter 15, verse 9, and he put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. This year, your heart will be purified by faith. And then he tells us in Zechariah chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2, reading from verse 5, he says, For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about will be unto you a wall of fire round about will be unto your family a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her a better amen you see the children of israel they were farmers many of them and they knew that when in the, in the farm they gather all those storms together and they put fire in it and they also put fire around all the fire will drive away all the snakes and all the reptiles because of the fire and then because of the fire around no snake and no terrible um, animal from outside will be able to get to their property and the Lord is saying that this year you are his property I am his property where are they I said where are they he says it will be a wall of fire around you in the village it will be a wall of fire around you on the street it will be a wall of fire around you and anywhere you go anywhere you are it will be a, fire, a wall of fire around you in the night when it is dark and you are hearing something from there something from there and then you are waking up go back to sleep nothing will come through that fire because he'll be a wall of fire around about you he will be the glory in the midst of her 
Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest ways the daughters of Babylon. You know, if you are walking in the same office with daughters of Babylon, if you are, if you are going to the same marketplace with the daughters of Babylon, be very careful. If you join them, if you are eating with them, because the one of fire will not be around the Babylonish person, then you lose the wall of fire around you. Keep some distance, keep some distance, and don't be like them, and don't be with them, and the wall of fire will still remain around you. Around me. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory as he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Better, amen. <laughs> you know, have lived long enough all these many years and the people that point at us like this, if you don't bend if you don't compromise I'll show you and then we run away from our property, we run away from our market, we run away from our possession, we run away from the house we are built because they said if you don't quit we will show you something this year, nobody will be able to show you anything. You will not run away from your house. You will not run away from your family. He that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Let them dare it. They will regret the ever plans to touch you. Nobody will touch you with evil. Nobody will touch me with evil. You'll be going stronger and stronger. Higher and higher. You'll be soaring up and up in Jesus' name. Now, we don't just say that. We believe it in the depths of our hearts. How do you know whether a person believes even the preacher, even the preacher? He preaches it, he quotes the Bible, he tells it to others. How do you know whether a preacher believes that or not? You can tell by his action. If he's running away from those people and he's saying to himself, the world is dangerous, I'll not allow them to kill me before my time, dare you. Huh? He's a preacher, he doesn't believe he's preaching. I believe my preaching. They cannot touch me. They will not touch me. They will not touch my, my family. How do you know? How do you know whether a deeper life member is deep enough to believe the word of God? Not just say, I believe, I believe. We, we know they are faced by their action. When, you know, I cannot give testimony in the church, I cannot do that. If I do, those people are there, they will pick my testimony and they will strike me again. There you are. You don't believe. But this year, I believe. I said I believe. You know, when you believe, you'll be free, as free as the bird that flies in the air. Everything the Lord has provided for you will be yours. Every gift He gives you, you will enjoy. Nobody will touch your family. Nobody will touch your property. Nobody will touch your business. He that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Show that you believe by taking off your mind away from those enemies. They will not touch your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Divine plan and preservation of his peculiar people. The divine plan and preservation of his peculiar people. We're coming to uh, Numbers chapter 10 and I'm reading from verse 29. And Moses said unto Obab, 
the, uh, the, the son of Regoel, the, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us, and will do you good. Everyone that comes with me will have the good that God has promised me. If you come along, if you make up your mind, that pastor, he preaches salvation. And I can see that salvation in his life. I'm going to go with him. Every good thing the Lord has done for me, you receive part of that in Jesus. And that man, he preaches righteousness and holiness. And I can see the goodness of God in his life. I can see the health. I can see the joy. I can see the happiness. And the joy of the Lord is his strength. As you come along with me, the joy will come to you. The blessing will come to you. If you are not here and there, here and there, all those other people out, you don't know them. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know the people that are fighting with their wives at home. You don't know what they have under the carpet. But me, you know me. There is nothing under my carpet. You know me. You know that everything is plain. And I depend upon the promise of God. And for these many years, ah, I remember now, this year, April 5, will be the 60th year that I've been in the Lord. And I'm still going stronger. And I'm still standing firm. All these 60 years, I have not lacked bread. I've not lacked water, I've not lacked possession, I've not lacked anything. Every provision has been supplied for 60 years. Come, come. Everything will be poured into your life. And so Moses said, come with us and we will do you good. This year in this church, he will do you good. All your ways, he will do you good. Joy in your life. Provision in your life. Power protection in your life. Healing. Deliverance in your life. How do you want to, you know, grow older and older and older and remain strong? I remain healthy. I remain provided for. How do you want to come to your ages and your brain is still correct? It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. You'll be as strong as God has made you. You'll be stronger, stronger, stronger in Jesus' name. Come thou with us, and we will do you good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. The Lord has not spoken evil concerning Israel. The Lord has not spoken evil against our church. Deep alive. Good. Better, best, come along. You'll be part of that goodness in Jesus' name. The divine plan and preservation of his peculiar people. Three things we're looking at. Number one, replenishing for the journey to the promise, to the pleasant land. Number two, repentance for the journey to the promised land. Number three, recommitment for our journey to 
paradise the perfect land look at number one number one replenishing for the journey to the promised land in the chapter 10 of numbers and verse 32 chapter 10 verse 32 it tells us here it says and it shall be if thou go with us yea it shall be that the goodness that the Lord shall do unto us the same we will do unto thee. If you make up your mind and you say, yes, I'm already here. There's no other place to go. To whom shall we go? He has the word of everlasting life. And I've made up my mind, I will go. I will go. I will go. Our children will go with us. Our teenagers will go with us. They will not be looking at, you know, flashing things outside there that doesn't have any reality. And as you go with us, as the Lord, whatever He will give us, whatever He will do for us, we will give unto thee. And we all plan, we all plan, we are going together. We will reach heaven together. And if you know any of our people that were deceived and they've gone here, they've gone there, go after them. They're suffering where they are. They're being deceived where they are. They're in terrible, terrible problems where they are. Go bring them the goodness of God will start again in their lives. We're coming to number two here. Number two, repentance for the journey to the promised land. We're looking at Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. Numbers chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 29. It says in verse 29, And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come, thou with us and we will do thee good for the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. Look at verse 30 in verse 30 and he said unto him I will not go but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. You know, when we read that and we don't read other parts of the Bible, we think the man refused, the man rejected the invitation and he never went with them. Look at Judges chapter 1 verse 16. In Judges chapter 1 verse 16, and the children of the Canaanite, Moses' father, in law look at that they call them just like you know you might bear two three names i bear you know two three names you have hobab but then he's called by another name he says the children of the canaanite moses father-in-law went up out of the city of uh, palm trees with the children of Judah. Eventually, Obab, the son of Raguel, went to tell his people, and he said, How can you reject such a wonderful invitation? Come, let us go. And they came back. You're welcome back. You have come back already. And all our brethren who are outside, they'll say, no, 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 I will not go with them. They are coming back in Jesus' name. And it says, with the children of Judah, unto the wilderness of Judah, which lies to the south of Arad. 
and they went and dwelt among the people and they went and dwelt among the people that is among Judah but of Israel look at look at first Chronicles chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 55 first Chronicles chapter 2 verse 55 and the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez the uh, it says uh, uh, the the and the Shemiathite and uh, Socrates, uh, these are the Canaanites. We read about them in, in uh, Judges, remember, that came of Hemas, the father of the house of Rechab. The, uh, the father of the house of Rechab. All the same, Hoba, Bereguel, and Canaanites, all of them. Now, it says of uh, the Canaanites, it says the father of Rechab. Who are these? Jeremiah chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying in verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Go unto the house of the Rechabite. There they are again. They are the in law, the, the father in law, they are the descendants of the father thy Lord Moses and it says speak unto him and bring them into the house of the Lord into one of the chambers and give them wine to drink look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says and I took Jehaziah the son of Jeremiah the son of Habazaniah and his brethren and all the sons and the whole house of the rich these are the descendants of the father-in-law of Moses and then in verse 4 in verse 4 it says and I brought them into the house of the Lord unto the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdiah a man of God which was by the chamber of the princes which was above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom and keeper of the door. Verse 5 in verse 5 and I said I, Jeremiah said before the sons of the Rechabites. These are the descendants of the father-in-law Moses and pots full of wine and cups and I said unto them drink ye wine. Verse 6 in verse 6 and they said we will drink no wine for, uh, for Jonadab the son of Rechab the father of the, the uh, father commanded of sin ye shall drink no wine neither ye nor your sons forever they were still obedient even when it appeared that Jeremiah wanted them to compromise they said no we came to Judah we came with Judah we're not part of the people of God and our father who was from the fa from the father-in-law of Moses? Here is what he has commanded us, and we will not drink any wine as you go to bring them back. Those who said no before, and he said they are not going with us, so bring them back. They will stand. They will not compromise anymore. And the Lord will bless them abundantly in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, here is the word of the Lord. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabite, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. The God of Israel. They have come to the God of Israel to come to abide under the cover, the covering, the shadow of the wings of the God of Israel because ye have obeyed the commandment of Rick of a Jonadab your father and catch all his princes and done according to all that he has commanded you. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 therefore thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not lack 
shall not want that means shall not lack a man to stand before me forever forever how long is your blessing how long is your provision how long is your protection how long is your usefulness forever 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 in jesus name look at number three here number three here is recommitment for our journey to paradise the perfect land recommitment in our journey we're recommitting ourselves and we're going to go with the lord until the time of the end in jesus name you will not die by the wayside you will not perish by the wayside you have come out of death into life and that life and the light will keep on increasing and increasing in your life till the final day in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. In Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at verse 7. It tells us in verse 7, in Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, it says, He that has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit says unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I grant to each of the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To him that overcometh. Every day you'll be an overcomer. Amen. Every event you'll be an overcomer. Every temptation, you'll be an overcomer. Every trial, you'll be an overcomer. Every walk in your life, you'll be an overcomer. The joy of the Lord will remain abide with you. And the goodness of the Lord will abide with you. He says, he that overcometh, he says, he will give him to each of the tree of the paradise of God. Look at verse 25. In verse 25 it says, He that he but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Do you have anything? Salvation? I said, Do you have anything? Blessing. Do you have anything? The doctrine of the Bible. Do you have anything? The goodness of God you have. Hold fast till I come. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Verse 27. In verse 27, He shall rule them with a rod of iron. Nobody will rule you with a rod of iron. You will rule in the camp of the enemies with a rod of iron. They will not overpower you. They will not overwhelm you. On the other hand, you will overpower them. From now until he comes again. It says, it's like the, 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 the vessel of the porter shall die they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Verse 28, in verse 28, and I will give him the morning star. In verse 29, it says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I can tell you have ears to hear. I can tell you have heart to receive. I have heard. I have received. I believe. And the goodness of the Lord will never stop in your life. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken good concerning you. He has spoken good concerning us. He has spoken good, good provision, good protection. Because of the Passover, if you have not applied the blood of the Lamb on your heart, this is the time. 
believe and the Lord will save everyone who believes you turn away from Egypt you turn away from darkness you turn away from sin you turn away from transgression and then you believe in the blood of the Lamb that was shed for you and the forgiveness and the salvation will be yours in Jesus name open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer he wants you to be a doer of the word show that you believe by accepting show that you believe by actually doing what he has commanded we do show that you believe by applying personally the blood of the lamb upon your heart accept forgiveness accept the pardon accept the salvation accept the passover passing from darkness unto light believe and claim that as yours if you've not been a believer before say this day this day this particular day i give myself in total repentance and faith unto the lord jesus christ whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved the blood cleanses us the blood washes us whiter than snow pass over when I see the blood I will pass over you turn away from Egypt turn away from their idols Turn away from their darkness. Turn away from their transgression and tradition. Repent. Believe on the blood of the sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Make it a definite act of receiving the salvation of the Lord. I believe His word will be fulfilled in your life. And then stay inside. Abide in Christ. Stay inside. Abide in His word. Because if you go out, you are no more under the cover of the blood of the Lamb. Stay under the cover, under the protection, under the provision of the blood of the Lamb. Anything of Egypt in your hand, drop it. Any tradition of Egypt, drop that. Any government of Egypt, burn it off. Any charm, any waistband, any ring of Egypt. Throw them away. Any association, any affiliation with Egypt or an equal yoke with Egypt, get rid of that and come. Lord, I come under the covering of the blood of the Lamb. Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Salvation is available for you. 
is security it's available for you pardon available the purging of your heart the purity of heart and life available for you Lord I come Lord I believe and your action will show that you believe your abiding in his word will show that you believe the change the transformation of your life will show you have believed stay and abide on a covering the pillar of cloud the pillar of fire directed their journey every day stay under the presence of Christ and the purging of his fire by his fire let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn all the chaff away from your life the chaff of talkativeness that makes the word leak away from your life the chaff of thoughtless action let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn all the chaff away from your life chaff useless worthless worthless relationship worthless habit that is not producing any good result in your life let the fire burn the chaff away let him sit at the purifier in your life and give you the protection of fire let him be a wall of fire around you. Accept that. Believe that. And those serpentine spirits will not be able to come in. And those demonic personalities will not be able to come in because you have a wall of fire around you. No destroyer will be able to come in. No servant agent of Satan will be able to come in when the wall of fire surrounds you. Get ready for the journey and the goodness of the Lord will abound in your life. He will replenish you. He will add blessing upon blessing upon blessing as you move on in the journey. And if you had said no 
before now repent for the journey to the promised land come along with us and every good thing the Lord has promised us will flow into your life recommit yourself to this journey to paradise the perfect land make this year a year of his goodness a year of his provision a year of his protection a year of his power in your life he will do good in your life joy happiness possession the people of God will possess their possession confidence trust a life healed and free of sickness and there will be fullness of joy assurance they'll never leave you He'll never forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my preserver. My shepherd, I will not lie. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You believe personally. You are going to the promised land. You are going to the plenteous land. You are going to the pleasant land. You are going to the perfect land. Nothing will stop you. Everything that hindered you in the past from plunging in to the fullest of the blessing of God. All those hindrances from today, this year, henceforth, they are taken away. The Lord will be a wall of fire around you. You will fear no evil. You will fear no loss. You will fear no lack. Everything you need for the journey, personal, family, provision, food, work, job, holiness, righteousness, protection, power, the Lord grant unto you in Jesus' name. This year will not be like the previous years. No tears this year. No sorrow this year. And there's no regret this year in Jesus' name. As you go, the cloudy pillar will be before you. The fairy pillar will be before you. And when the Egyptians are coming from behind, the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire will be behind you, giving you light and bringing darkness unto them. Yeah. Every good thing the Lord has spoken about concerning you, He will fulfill. Yeah. 
everything you missed in the past, you are getting them from today. Yeah. The promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. Yeah. The past over. Yeah. The past over. Yeah. Be real and definite in your life. Yeah. Because you pass from death unto life. You pass from evil to the goodness of God. You pass from all the dangers and you come to the very favor of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. Where are you? The blessing coming upon you. I said, where are you? Raise up those hands. And remember, you believe in a very definite way. It's not just to hear, it's not just to even preach it or declare it, it's to believe that this is all mine and they're all yours in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, we thank you and bless your name. You are a good God, you are a merciful God, and you are a covenant keeping God. We are asking, O oh Lord, everything your people have asked according to your promise, give unto them in Jesus' name. Forgiveness for those who have repented, salvation for those who have called on the name of the Lord, and they have believed on the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Abide in power, abide in provision, abide in goodness of the Lord upon every one of them in Jesus' name. The good you have promised your people, and you said, Everyone that comes along, come with us and will do the good of the good that the Lord said He will give unto us. Oh Lord, I pray that goodness will abide in every life in Jesus' name. The goodness of your presence in every life, the goodness of your power in every life. The goodness of your provision in every life And the goodness of what Christ achieved On the course of Calvary Upon every life in Jesus' name The goodness of your peculiar people Lord, I pray that you grant you everyone Everyone here, everyone online Everyone everywhere Believing you at this time In Jesus' name the goodness of your healing you said the inhabitants of the place shall not say i am sick because everyone in that place would have been forgiven their sin lord we pray the goodness you have for the people who are your children the goodness you have for the people who are healed by the stripes of the lamb that goodness of healing and health grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. The goodness of long life, long life, prolonged life, longevity, grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. The goodness of protection and of deliverance, of dominion, bring upon every life. Oh Lord, we are asking that no one will die before their time. No one here, no one there will die before your time in Jesus' name. Every plan of God for you, you will fulfill. Every project of the Lord for you, you will fulfill. And you will live your life in joy, in happiness, in victory, in triumph. In abundant provision and presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. God will be a wall of fire around you. And whosoever attempts to touch you will be touching the apple of his eye. And no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. We deliver you from the hand of the terrible. It'll protect your life and this year will be a new year for you a prosperous new year for you a happy new year for you 
a healthy new year for you. A heavenly new year for you. As you pray this year, God will answer your prayer. And all your good desires according to his promise will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Go in the strength of the Lord. Go in the provision of the Lord. And go in the power of the Lord. The enemies that conquered you before, this year, if they try, they will fail. You go from strength to strength. From power to power. From one level of joy to another level of joy. Go succeed. Go achieve. Go be triumphant. Go and be more than a conqueror. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.